We're in the classes page going over structure. Core structure is one of the recommended global class systems inside Client First, and probably the most important global class system inside Client First. Our structure is made up of classes, which are layers that contain our components, our visual elements on the page. And we have a core structure that is flexible. It could be used in small builds, in big giant builds. It could be used in very complex pages or very simple pages. It's all about organizing the outermost layers and elements of your page. This is a nice overview of what your structure can look like. We have a page wrapper that wraps everything, wraps the entire page contents. We have the main wrapper, which wraps the main or primary content of the page. We have sections, which wrap sections and use as and are used as an organization layer inside Designer. We have our page padding, which is used to have universal left-right padding on our site. And then we have our containers, which apply a nice max width to our content. Let's get into each one of these one by one. Let's look inside Designer to see them live in action. First, let's get into Page Wrapper. Page Wrapper is really useful for two different things. Number one, if I wanna take an entire page and move the elements of that page to another page, I can go and one click copy paste this to another page. So I have everything in this page wrapped in page wrapper. It's very flexible to move throughout my Webflow build. I can also apply an overflow hidden class to it, which is going to prevent horizontal scrolling on this page. This is super, super useful. So we like the page wrapper for organization purposes. If I go one step deeper into the page wrapper, we're going to find the main wrapper. And we have the main wrapper specifically to follow accessibility best practices. Let's look at this. First, the page wrapper we can see by default is going to be tag div. When you go put a new div on the page, it's going to be tag div. And our main wrapper, we have to change the tag to main. And you can see the Webflow, the Webflow queue says specifies the main content of a document. This is the header and the testimonial and the call to action and all of the actual content on the page that's specific to this page. That's going to go in the main wrapper. That's done for accessibility purposes. Then we have our section, section dash section name. And this is used really just for organization. That's the primary use case of this. It is to anchor scroll inside our page. So if I want to edit the awards section, I can go to the awards section. I can go to the testimonial section. I can go to the home about section and I can go and navigate through this page and quickly edit things very quickly. We find it's much easier to onboard our clients to Webflow when we have this visual, this very clear view into what each section is. So this is how we organize our sections. Great for clients. And if I go one step deeper, you'll see that we have page padding inside the section. We've decoupled page padding from other layers, from other classes, from other styles, so that we can really, really take control of it. We can move this in and out of elements. We can change the location of it. And we can always say, this is our official left, right page padding. And you'll see here, if I go and make updates to this, it's going to update globally. So we have all of our left, right padding on the page updating with this change. If you have a full width section, you don't need the page padding. You can have images or background or text expand to the entire size of the page by just removing this layer from your core structure. So decoupling it is really powerful. We love to use it like this and that's what page padding does. And then we have our container with size. This one is specifically for centering and containing with a max width 
the content on the page. So if we go into our example, if I go into page padding, we have container with large. And what this is doing is applying a margin left auto, margin right auto, with a max width. This is really, really useful for making sure all of our container sizes are the same size, that all of our larges are the same size, all of our mediums are the same size, all of our smalls are the same size. You can continue to add to this list. This doesn't mean you need to use three defined container sizes, but we use container with size as our official naming convention for our containers. And that's the core structure. What you have here is how we structure pretty much every single one of our Webflow pages. Having these things in different layers gives us a lot of power and a lot of control. It limits the need and use for combo classes, which can make big builds very difficult to manage. So this is the structure. We're going to learn a lot more about this. We can jump even deeper into this when we go into the wireframes and the clonables. And of course, please learn more about this. We have a lot of examples and write-ups inside these learn wars. <laughs> <laughs>